Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. We've got a guitar from Japan today. This is actually going to be a present from a father to his daughter, and he wanted to get her something special. And initially, this was supposed to be the legendary Sakurabu Erst guitar, but unfortunately, they sold out. We couldn't get him one, but he decided he really liked the look of this Hybrid 2 Series Stratocaster. So let's go ahead and get this thing open. Uh-oh, my powers are a little bit rusty. Let's try again. There we go, much better. Let's get this thing out. So I'm pretty excited to see this finish in the flesh because it looked pretty cool in the stock photos. It's kind of similar to one that we had just looked at a couple of weeks ago, but this is known as US Blonde Stratocaster, which I find it kind of funny because this is a Japan exclusive run of guitars and then it's you know called US Blonde, but they have a lot of other finishes that are of other flavors of like countries and other things. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. But it's part of the Hybrid 2 series of guitars and they have a whole bunch of different models with in this lineup, but the whole claim to fame for this whole series is the fact that it's supposed to look very vintage inspired. However, all of our specs are supposed to be very modernized, so we've got better fretboard radius for most people, upgraded pickups, hardware, things such as that that we will learn about on the workbench. So there's a whole bunch of models within here. So we've got the Stratocaster that we're talking about today. They also have the hybrid jazz and P bass series. And if you want to get crazy with a five string jazz bass, they also have that. There's Jazz Masters. And you've got the regular Telecaster. But just recently, they announced a limited edition Telecaster, which I thought this thing was interesting. They call it Metallic Three Color Sunburst. It just looks like they put maybe a little bit of sparkle flake in the finish. I'm not sure. I might have to check one of those things out because it's a little bit strange. But the prices range from about 114,000 yen up to about 135,000. And they just have so many color options on all of these. Since we're talking about the Strat today, let's take a look at these. So US Blonde, which we're documenting today, that you can get in a maple fretboard as well as a rosewood fretboard variation. There's Arctic White, Forest Blue, Modena Red, Vintage Natural in both fretboard options. I really like that one. That looks great with the alder body. Straight Up Black and Three Color Sunburst, which I think looks really good with the maple fretboard as well. So to learn more about the Stratocaster that Miguel bought his daughter Guilen, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the Hybrid 2 Stratocaster, man! I knew this thing had some modernized specs, but there were a few things that even shocked me when I took this thing apart. Starting off with our tuners, it's actually those locking ones that we had just talked about a couple of episodes ago. You can't tell it just by looking at it, but they are the locking ones. So just wait till you see all the other mysteries of this one. So first off, our bodies on these guys are made out of alder. And when Miguel first contacted me wanting to swap out Sakura Burst for this one, I was like, you do know it's not going to be quite as pink as it looks in the photos, right? And he's like, yeah, we've seen this in person in the flesh before. We definitely want this one since the other one's not available. And it does have a slight pink hue to it, but that comes down to the alder body beneath it. So each and every one of these will be a little bit different. It's a bit tough to see, but we definitely won the wood grain lottery. A lot of ringage right here. It's tough to see, but we got a lot of nice wood grain on this one. Nice and ringy there, and then a little bit more straight pattern on this side. The pickups for this series, they didn't give them too fancy of a name, just a hybrid two single coil Stratocaster pickups. But wait until you see underneath this pick guard. Brace yourselves. <laughs> look at that obnoxiously giant capacitor they have right there. Take a look at the markings on that big bad boy. But here's what the backside of the pickups themselves look like. You've got the shielding built onto them. These really do have nice pots in them. CTS 250K. This definitely has modern playability written all over it right here. I'm kind of surprised to see that they don't have any like S1 switching type compatibility like to get the neck and bridge together. But I'm not complaining, this stuff is looking nice and clean. The only other upgrade you could do would be like the cloth wiring, but everything's looking nice here. And in case you're interested in modifying one of these, you do have a humbucker route with a single with another humbucker. So you could have an HSH setup or anything in between. You've got the shielding paint, but they've got a whole bunch of other gunk. Maybe the body wasn't routed, you know, 100% flush, but hey, it's all there. This one has a three ply pick guard, white, black, and white with two tones and a single volume and the output jack is located on the front. The jack itself is one of those two-stage ones, so it locks in in two different places, so that's extra secure. And our readings, neck pickup is 6.18k ohms, middle pickup 5.82, and then our bridge at 
with our in-betweens for fun, somewhere around 6.7-ish, and neck and middle around 3. Another good feature is the two-point synchronized tremolo system, six individual saddles, all of which are Fender branded. So, so far this thing's looking pretty nice just on the body. It feels quality too. Sometimes these made in Japan's, you can tell like they're a little bit lesser, but at the price point of this one, honestly, it feels just like an American Stratocaster because it has all of the appointments that we're used to seeing on those. So even though I mainly like to document like the limited edition stuff, I'm really glad this one got part of my forwarding service here so we could actually take a look at it. And here we can finally see the wood grain. My camera is cooperating. But moving on from our alder body, let's check out our maple neck. Now this is either going to be a love it or leave it type thing, but we have a satin finish on the back. That's like one of the really nice high quality ones. Still almost feels slightly glossy, but has that faster feel. But to make it look vintage, they left the gloss on the fretboard, which I personally really like. So I'm very happy with that. Although your thoughts and opinions on that might vary because I know there's some guys that hate the goopy goop on there, but it's not too thick, but it's just there to make it look the part. And this example has some great wood grain, but we have narrow tall frets and there's 22 of them. That's always cool on these. Sometimes the made in Japan ones only have 21. You've got your dot marker inlays with the standard 25 and a half inch scale length and a nine and a half inch fretboard radius. They start you off right with a true bone nut, which measures 1.67 inches, and that increases to 2.06 by the 12th. First fret neck depth is rocking 0.86, and at the 12th, we have a medium 0.948. And here's what that neck looks like at the first fret and the 12th fret. They just call it a modern C-shaped neck profile, and that's exactly what it is. It stays very consistent feeling, just gets a little bit wider by the 12th, but still maintains that roundedness. And to make things even more modern and cool, we have truss rod access at the top of the headstock. Might not look as good as hiding it down here, but it sure is a heck of a lot easier to adjust. But take a look at our tuners. I thought for sure those are just your regular poke it down, wrap it around style, because that was their intentions to make it look like the vintage style tuners, but it's not. You actually string it through the side, and then these are just auto locking. So you put your string in there, and then you just start tightening it up, and then it just automatically puts a post into it. My second time dealing with these, a little bit easier than the first, because I know what to expect. Although I still prefer locking tuners that you have a mechanism on the back, because it, it's just peace of mind. I like doing it knowing it's locked. Now, not questioning, did it lock? Is it gonna be okay? But you've got a single string tree and your Fender logoing right here with the Stratocaster. Now we'll move on to the backside here. Again, we can appreciate the wood grain that you can see through this US blonde finish. It's definitely a uh, multi-piece body, but hey, sometimes that helps getting with the variety of the wood grains. But normally, made in Japan Stratocasters, they have a very slightly different shape to them. But this one seriously feels very close to the USA counterparts, the way that they've got the contour and everything. But you can see our trim system here, nice large block that's non-magnetic, with three springs stocked from the factory, four bolt neck, and again, this is a very smooth satin finish. We even get a little bit of flame figuring right here in the neck. You've got the skunk stripe on the back. Lots of wood grain on this maple beast. And then our serial number of this one dates it to 2022, and it's made in Japan, and the locking tuners that are incognito. This one weighs about seven and a half pounds. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how she sounds. <laughs> Let's go ahead and run through the tones of this thing. Very USA Stratocaster-like, that's what I've got to say so far. Neck pickup, nice and juicy. And the polar opposite, the bridge. 
Give that middle a try. And of course, you also got your in betweens. on some dirt. So what are my final thoughts on this thing? I thought it was a very nice Stratocaster. I didn't really have that much high hopes of me liking this thing when we had ordered it because you know, it's just a basic Stratocaster. I like to document limited editions, but all the specs on this thing really agree to me. This is very uh, beefy sounding Stratocaster, even acoustically here. <laughs> It's got a good bassy rumble to it. Now, I'm sure there's some American made equivalents or like something that's a little bit easier to get because these are Japan exclusives. Sure, if you do the whole currency conversion, it's like around a thousand bucks, but then you got import duties, taxes, shipping, getting it back to the USA. It does get rather expensive to get one of these. So I'm sure there's a parts caster variation that you could get if you don't want to go through that hassle. Or if you need help, just like this one, it's an international forwarding service. You can check it out on my website. But yes, this is a fantastic Stratocaster. I really enjoyed it. I'm still not quite sold on these tuners yet because sometimes it's a little bit finicky when you're actually just tuning them out in the wild. You'll be turning it a little bit and then it's not actually moving until you've turned it so much. But I do like the fact that they make them still look vintage and you don't even know they're locking tuners unless you're the guy stringing it up. I really like the gloss finish on that fretboard, whereas the back is just that nice slick satin. That's all great. The color I actually ended up really enjoying. It's got a good heft to it. I would suggest one of these if you can get one. 
All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.